Well, we made pretty good progress this week. So let's see how it came to be. One nice thing about working on these projects is that you do get better at troubleshooting. So here's one that I had. I was using, I have the new DC motor set up here, and I was using the same setup as before where this comes over. I have a new IR sensor now, which I hooked up correctly. This comes over, it senses a distance, and then it goes back. And it worked one time that it went back, and then the other time it didn't go back. So I thought, Maybe I fried somehow the driver. I still have to commit it to a solder board, but um, that wasn't the case. It worked just fine. So what was happening is that it comes over and I tell the motor to stop and then I reset the counter chip, which is counting from here. And the problem was that before with the stepper motor, I only had to delay 100 milliseconds. So it would stop, reset, go back. Because when you tell it to stop, it stops right away. This one has some momentum. So it keeps continuing past, you, you tell it to stop, you wait 100 milliseconds, and then you reset the counter chip. Well, it's still traveling after that 100 milliseconds, so it goes past the reset point, it continues traveling after you've reset it. And it's overflowing to a very large number. So when I want to go back, I say, as long as it's less than 30,000, which is what this counts to in the middle, as long as it's less than 30,000, keep going and then stop. And the problem was that it overflows and it goes to this big number, which seems sort of odd because I thought originally, well, I'm using a long variable in the Arduino, must be overflowing. And then I thought, wait a minute, but it's assigned long. It should just go negative and it shouldn't matter. It should do the same thing. And what I realized was that the variable, the 32-bit number in the counter IC, which is then read out by the Arduino, is not signed. You can tell it to count up or to count down, and I have it counting up for obvious reasons. So it's actually the variable in the chip that's overflowing backwards and going to a huge number. It's like 2 billion something. It's actually larger, but I'm not reading the entire thing out with the Arduino. So anyway, um, but like that was an example of a problem where I was able to sort it out in a relatively small amount of time with minimal frustration. So it's, it's satisfying. You feel like you're making some progress. So anyway, let's get that straightened out and then we'll get this thing running back and forth. We did a few back and forth tests just for good measure to get a feel for the acceleration to make sure that nothing was overheating and melting right away. Everything seemed good, so we reattached the pendulum arm and got started. Adjusting the home function was pretty straightforward for this as opposed to the stepper motor, but adding the safety stop at the end was not because for this one if you just tell it zero throttle it'll coast and it'll run right into the ends so i had to add i actually turn off the motor and then engage it briefly in the opposite direction sort of an active stop and that worked much better it comes to an immediate halt you spend most of the time on a project fighting with the thing trying to get it to do something which it is seemingly does not want to do so i was quite happy when i was able to Pretty much just engage all the systems, hold the thing up, and see that it was doing a decent job of balancing. But unfortunately, that happiness was short-lived. This initial control strategy was to have a dead band in the center where it didn't do anything because it's all proportional and I didn't want it to oscillate too much. And then you have a proportional response on either side of that. Another thing that I noticed was that the speed controller was getting quite warm. So, and the way that I noticed it originally was not from the heat, it was from I could smell the plastic melting and if you pull the transistor out of the, out of the breadboard you can actually see that it's melting a hole around it. I didn't want to change too many things at once so I started by removing that dead band that I was using and that seemed to work pretty well. It increased the response and everything was good there. I knew that it would create more heat though so I was eyeing uh, the upgrade to a PCB. The thing about removing that dead band though is that then it's trying to achieve precisely vertical. So that neutral point is very important. And the neutral point is simply 1200 pulses or 180 degrees from the perfectly down position which is set when you come back to home here. So you have to stop that and then it waits a little bit more before it resets that vertical encoder. The heat issue is getting to be a bit much so I committed to putting this thing on the PCB. I had a small one which I 
had bought previously and started transferring it over. I was being quite careful because I didn't have any replacement NPN or uh, PNP transistors. So I really didn't want to fry those by screwing this up. Not that you want to do that anyway, but I was particularly careful in this case. I got that all soldered together and everything was looking pretty good. Then I went ahead and clipped off all the uh, extra bits of wire on the bottom side. And after that, I thickened up the traces so to reduce the resistance, especially on the areas where the power was going to flow through. I didn't have any scrap heat sinks from other professional products, so I just cut up some scrap aluminum that I had and put it on there. And it kind of worked out that the, the only shape that would fit, or the shape that would work best, was this sort of gull wing thing, which looks pretty cool. And then I had to bend them down ever so slightly to let that center motor connector fit in there. So at the end of the day, it looked kind of neat. But I soon regretted it because I had tested it without the heat sinks and it worked okay. And then as soon as I put them on there and fired the thing up, the, the whole cart just ran at full speed down into the end and ran into the motor. Kind of got jammed in place, actually. So I knew that MOSFETs sometimes have uh, one of their leads is actually bonded directly into that heat sink tab. And I kind of suspected that that was the case for transistors, too or at least some of these, so I, so I tested it and found that it was indeed the case. To take care of that issue, I had to uh, cut them in half again, and we ended up here with a almost Star Wars style 4 gull wing setup. But it did the trick now that they're isolated and everything worked fine. Another improvement that I made was to take a scrap of walnut and brace the entire assembly over into the bookshelf to the right side because it was rocking back and forth slightly, and that's throwing off our system. These improvements may have helped, but honestly, the system just wasn't that much different, and it was still pulling a ton of current. This thing's running at 19 volts, the current limit is set at 5 amps, and you can see here that it's maxing out all the time. That just seems like a lot of juice, and you can tell from the heat. I mean, the thing is, in, in no time at all, you, you can't even touch it. You touch it, I burn myself very lightly, actually. After tweaking some settings in the program, I got it working better, but it still has this constant right bias where you can bump it pretty significantly to the left, more than even I'm showing here, and it'll go over and then recover, but when it comes to the right, it never seems to quite catch up enough and it'll hit the safety limit and flip down. I spent quite a bit of time fiddling with this, at least until it stopped working because I'd forgotten about the heat and running all that current through that little speed controller fried one of the resistors. After replacing that resistor, it still wasn't cooperating, so I was going through the code and I realized that I was actually outputting in the one direction a very large negative PWM number. So in one spot here, I'm saying if it's above zero, what we're going to do is just put that straight into the PWM. We're going to limit it to 255. And then if it's, if it's negative, we're going to do it on the other pin because that's the way I have it set up but I, that value is still negative. So I'm feeding a very large negative number into the PWM, which is interesting that it worked as well as it did because my scope wasn't showing me an output directly from the PWM for that. So I don't have quite a very good explanation for that, but it was working well enough to fool me into thinking that it was working uh, again. It's amazing how much time you can spend trying to make a system work and it won't. And then sometimes it'll work almost even though you're not even though you have a major error in your code so or your design which is pretty frustrating but we got that sorted out and then we can see here on this video what I'm supposed to be getting which is a response which is small on one pin to one side and then when you go past to the other side a an equally proportional response in the other direction now everything's back in order we have our resistor fixed we have our code fixed we get everything fired up and more smoke comes out of the speed control and the motor runs at full because uh, it fried the resistor and the motor runs at full speed down to the end runs into the end and chews up some of the teeth on the gear but fortunately there's enough flexibility in the system that it it didn't ruin the gear even i have a backup but prefer not to use it just yet on further investigation it turned out that the small transistor which was triggering the large one which is controlling the large one was actually fried. So here's a good one, which is, has no resistance or infinite resistance between the things. And then this is the fried one, which has 187. And that is contributing significantly to our resistor problem.
to hopefully avoid running into the end again. I did a quick no load test once I had everything straightened out and it seemed to be in order so I committed to reassembling it. The next few tests were pretty promising. I didn't do a particularly good job of balancing because I didn't have the settings set but it was much smoother and the current draw was way down. I've been tweaking the settings on the gain and stuff for this kind of under the thought that what should happen is that it should be able to stop and have it balanced, but I was just realizing that that's not what the code is trying to achieve. The code is trying to achieve, make sure it's off, staying balanced, essentially with minimal change in the rate of the motor output. And so when it's balanced and it's sort of smoothly driving to one side, that's pretty good. That's basically what we're trying to achieve. So what we need to do is introduce a function where when it's off center, it adds a little bit of velocity this way to help bring it back towards the center to try and to try and ultimately have it basically sit like this and just make a few tweaks. So that's what I'm gonna pursue now. The extra velocity idea was soon discarded in favor of having it lean, i.e. setting the neutral point to lean towards the center because then the rest of the function is sort of inherently trying to catch up with that and this worked much better. The velocity idea just wasn't cooperating. The other issue that I was having though is that it still has that right bias. And I tried over, I tried introducing extra velocity when it heads to the right. I tried correcting, I tried correcting a bunch of different ways. I checked the angle of this. I thought maybe it was leaning to the right. I shimmed it up until it was obviously to the left. I didn't have my levels handy and nothing worked. I thought that maybe the motor or the speed controller had a bias. I can't change the way that the I can't easily change the way that the motor is oriented in there, but I reversed the leads into the speed controller and then I reversed the direction pins into the out from that come out from the Arduino. And that didn't help it either. I tried a lot of things and I could not get rid of that right bias. I eventually was able to compensate with that tilting the neutral strategy. But what I finally settled on as my overall conclusion at the moment that the most likely cause for that right bias is the way that the belt is set up because when it's going to the right it's pulling directly on the cart so there's depending and it's, it's the further right that it gets the closer the motor is to it meaning there's uh, it's the most direct input whereas the other way there's a lag and that's the only thing I can come up with that's that's different in any case I was eventually able to get it dialed in and now it works great you put it up there and it just bounces back and forth. And the thing that I would like to note also is that this is only at 12 volts, whereas before I had it at 24 at one point with five amps. And this thing is pulling much, much less current. It, um, I don't specifically recall it maxing out the current ever on the current setup. <laughs> and it's the, it goes much longer. It doesn't get too warm. Uh, it does generate a good amount of heat, but it's not excessive anymore. So clearly things seem to be more in the realm of reason. And I almost started getting cocky and started thinking about uh, upgrading to a swing up strategy, but I decided to hold off for this week, just get the video produced, get it out there, have a little fun with some tuna fish cans. And uh, we'll be back next week. I did a little work on the camera control arm already this week, but we're gonna do more and have a video on that next week. So thank you for watching.